Greetings from Chicago. Uh, and of course, thank you, uh, Anna, Ivan, for hosting this wonderful event. And I'm sorry I can't be here, but as you see, I have uh, a view of Crown Hall with many reflections and shadows, uh, which is the, the uh, overarching theme of our friend Arina's work. Um, so I'm happy to jump in. Arina and I have a little bit of a scripted interview, but I know she doesn't like scripted interviews too much. Uh, so I'm being the academic, sort of reining her in. Uh, if nothing else, just I think it'd be useful, you know, for the audience who is less aware of her work. Uh, and that we might convince to come to Barcelona or purchase the book. I think I just want to uh, cover a couple of, you know, of the uh, issues. So, Alina, if you want to start, I'm happy yeah. to sort of go back ping-ponging across the yeah, Atlantic. Yeah, good idea. And uh, just to explain the setting, Michelangelo and I decided uh, before that we don't really need to but because of our relationship and long partnership, we like to have a dialogue and we are really interested in each other. And my first question, this is a very simple one. What got you started to be interested in my photography? Well, I think you've already heard that uh, story of you walking into Crown Hall, but I was fascinated by the fact that you arrived to photography of architecture with a background in art and psychology. Uh, we have seen numerous approaches, especially from the 50s to the 70s and 80s, where Mies buildings have been photographed by professional uh, uh, art, uh, photographers from inside uh, architecture and design. And I think though, there's so many, as your work demonstrates, there's unexpected opportunities to learn about buildings uh, and and I continue, frankly, to be fascinated by the fact that Mies, I would argue more than most modern and contemporary architects, has continued to attract artists using different media to read and reread the work. And the work, you know, the programming at the Barcelona Pavilion is a testament to that. Um, how about I ask you a question now? So, and since I know you very well, but so this is mostly for the benefit of the audience who knows your work less. Um, so your work combines different styles, techniques, and genres. Uh, maybe you can explain who are your artistic role models? What, what photographers uh, inspire you and in what way? Yeah, thank you for the question. Um, I really love to get into what photographers did in the 20s and in the 30s. So uh, the li first Leica 35mm uh, camera was built in 1925, uh, no, it's 26. And at that time, so much happened in the art scenery and uh, people liked to experience and to express themselves in a new way. And what they did is so playful. And I like to see, to see them. And let me mention three idols I have got. There's first that legendary Henri Cartier-Bresson. And what I learned from him is to be prepared for the moment. And not, for, not to wait for it, but to be prepared when it comes. And uh, the second one is Ilse Bing. Actually, I have a camera. My husband uh, gave me one uh, from the 32, like original Leica camera. I went through Barcelona with it, a black and white, all manual. Yeah, it is exciting to work with this as well. And Ilse Bing, she is a, a German lady, and she decided to go for her dream being a photographer, a professional photographer, and she went to Paris, like many others did at these days. And uh, she was so, so, she liked to experiment so much. And you probably know the self-portrait she did from herself, and it is in the mirrors, it is with reflections. I love it. It is so focused, concentrated. It is so honest and female at the same time. Yeah, my grandma was a, one of the first art student, female art students in these days, so perhaps that is also a line for me. And the third one is Henri Cartier, uh, André, <laughs> sorry, a little bit excited, uh, André Cartes, of course. And what I like, he is 
probably the one who influenced, has got the most uh, in, influence on me because he he is on the ceiling between reality and imagination. He trusts so much his vision and his way viewing reality. And I, I remember, I will always remember the exhibition, the big exhibition in Berlin and Martin Gruppius Bau, and that did something with me. Great, thank you, Alina. So yeah. I think it's the, the <laughs> ping pong is back in your court. Uh, uh, do you want me to ask the question and we can, uh, the next one, or there was around the photo that I used of your Farnsworth house. Do you recall yeah, in my let book? Let me ask you, let me ask you, Michelangelo, and uh, continue. It is a uh, kind of a uh, second part of the first question. I know that you, for your recent book, uh, Modern, Ivan mentioned it, Modern in the Middle, Chicago Houses from 1925 to 1975, which is available in the shop, by the way. <laughs> and you choose one photo of mine, just one, one big size. I love it and the way you placed it. But why this one? Right. So, so I think, and Ivan and Anna, maybe you're going to give us may, uh, uh, data, but I would imagine that together with the Barcelona Pavilion, the Farnsworth House is one of the most photographed buildings in the world. Uh, but we, I don't know if we have data for that. But just to go back to the, the book, um, you know, our book treated uh, well-known and lesser-known Chicago land houses. Uh, and what I was most fascinated about your uh, photo of the farms were taken from outside uh, is the way you captured the beautiful reflections of the surrounding trees. Like all too often, the house, the farms with us, appears like static instead of dynamic in photographs. Uh, say, for example, Subimoto's blurry images, but uh, but most of the time it's fixed in time. You bring through your photos of the reflections and the shadows, the living dimension of the house and most importantly, the landscape. And so that's why I thought I would start circulating your images in publications and uh, to sort of uh, add to the thousands of images that are already existing. But uh, you add an important note of quality. So, uh, okay, so I have a question for you. And uh, I know that I don't want you to choose between your favorite children, because it's always a difficult uh, uh, a task. But instead of saying, what is your favorite buildings of Mies, I'm going to ask you what your favorite experiences of different Mies buildings, and perhaps even including the ones in which you have um, shown your exhibitions. I mean, we had a great, uh, wonderful transformation of Crown Hall uh, here, uh, which was a remarkable event. So perhaps you can speak to some of your favorite experiences. Yes, yeah, so thank you for the question. Interesting question. Visiting different buildings, one can think, oh, they might be all different, they have different functions, different floor plans, different cultures, different cities, so they might, the experience might be very different. But at the end, I thought about it today, at the end, it, it was in a way similar. And the thing which surprised me mostly is that, you know, like, like we had it in the film, and I, as I already said it, um, I feel when I come to a place, a building, I, I have that feeling first. And what, Michelangelo, what impressed me so much was that others, others have the same feeling, yeah? So Mies has got a, a big, very unique in, impact on people. And it is kind of timeless. Isn't that exciting? And I'm right. very look, much looking forward to my next, one of my next projects, which is about um, how people design museum places, how they live with this, how they, how they, uh, yeah, uh, what I said. And uh, it happened first that the residents of the 900, 910 Lecture Drive apartments invited me to, um, to photograph their apartments. And now we will have a project about this and Doug Lone's apartment will be also part of it, looking forward. And the Crown Hall, there is different function, different setting. There are no residents, there are students. 
And I love to ask people working or just being there, how, how is your life in this building? And I asked one student at Crown Hall, and he said to me, um, you know, we are always taught, uh, you have to keep in mind, if you design a building, there will be spring, summer, fall, and winter, and it has to, to, to fit for every season. And he said, in this building, Crown Hall, it is not a theory, it is an experience every day. We don't forget, because we live in this. Excellent. In fact, if you look at the image, uh, which is uh, my screensaver, um, I'm actually on IIT campus right now, but uh, I, 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 can't, I can't really occupy all of Crown Hall. It's a little bit too much. Uh, but as you see from the clerestory windows, it's ablaze with fall colors of the uh, honey locust trees that Alfred Caldwell planted. Um, so great. And so, uh, you know, we had talked about, you know, your interest in reflections and shadow. Right and uh, and I wrote about that and I wanted to quote I me. It's me asking you, right? Yeah. And my question is uh, to 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 tell the audience. Michelangelo wrote a wonderful essay in the book, which is published about the Mies project, and it has got a preword by Dirk Lowen, which I'm really grateful to have. And uh, the, the essay Michelangelo wrote is really interesting in detail. And there's one thing, um, he, he quotes Meats when he says, he distinguish between shadow and reflection. And uh, that is very interesting. Uh, I would like you to elaborate on this and how you see this aspect in my photography. Right. Um. So to quote Mies, he said, as early as 1922, which is important here, so it predates the Barcelona, predates Crown. He says, I, in his two glass skyscrapers of 1922, he says, I discovered by working with actual glass models that the important thing is the play of reflections and not the effect of light and shadow as in ordinary movies. And you all are there. So... Let's see if Mises' words are resonant. You will see, capture the reflections on the, the water. You will capture the reflections on the glass. So even, you know, if Arina wasn't showing you her photographs, you could observe that what we're saying is not, uh, you know, uh, uh, out of place. And for me, what's so important is that the, the way your photographs show relationships between buildings and their surroundings. That we all know that at least here in Chicago in the 70s, there was plenty of Mies haters. Uh, it's now hard to imagine that there was a generation of architects that grew up being very antagonistic to Mies because of the bad copies that some of his students had done uh, and none of the subtle, uh, beautiful dimensions that uh, Arena has captured. So for me, uh, just to summarize, I love the fact that you uh, capture, of course, in the tradition of Henri Cartier-Bresson's decisive moment, you know, unexpected moments, which reflections reveal. They're about specific times in the day, specific times in the season. So these, these buildings appear, as the student you mentioned in Crown Hall, to live and change through the seasons. And, and so for the critics that uh, said that Mises' work was, uh, you know, the same everywhere in every city, the so-called banal interpretation of the international style. Well, we know that that's not the case. So now I have a question for you. Uh, just maybe if you can, you know, there's a technical term that I refer to in the essay called specular reflections, right? That is the technical term when shadows need a surface, a smooth surface, whether it's hard glass or the, the surface of a, a water a pool that you have several two in the Barcelona Pavilion. So maybe you can explain because you also have shadows in your work. So what is for you the difference between reflections and shadows? Wonderful question, an artistic question. 
And uh, as, as for me, Forst, there's again something which they have in common. They both are children of light. And, <laughs> and I really, I'm really flash triggered by any quality of light that makes me awake, being awake, and uh, I start being creative. So what is, that is what they have in common. And what is uh, the, to distinguish between them is uh, that the, no, there's one more thing they have in common. They invite me to the other dimension. So they are really a play between reality and a different reality, more an imagination, an inside reality. And um, yeah, this way I really, I really like following them. And the difference is kind of a technical one. I, I really like the, the, um, shape, the, the sun, bright sunlight for reflections because that makes it clear and obvious what I'm photographing, viewing. It is hard to photograph a reflection if the sky is clouded. Yeah? So I need, somehow I need this sky and you can see it in my photographs. It is different to photograph shadows. It is very nice to have them smooth, to have them moving. So we have that one photo of Brown Hall, and you mentioned the trees outside. And as I know, Michael and <laughs> Mies decided the distance between the tree and the, the glass facade. And now you have this dance of the shadows from the trees. And that is so wonderful. And I wouldn't like to have this sharp. It is very beautiful the way it is. Great, thank you. Now, I think uh, you have a question coming up on your end. Ping pong back. <laughs> One last question. <laughs> yeah, oh yes, that is, that is important. In your essay, you, you um, have this aspect of the, my, uh, you, you have a very careful and deep um, look, um, observation on my work. And you wrote about the expressionistic part of it. And I, I would like to have you, if you would like to, to elaborate on this. Great. So um, if we think of painters like Emile Nolde or Kokoschka, they, they shape form with layers of color. Uh, you can look at any of their portraits uh, and see how they reveal surface qualities, both real and imagined, to go back to your point, that are not immediately visible. So in this, in this sense, your work tends to straddle uh, expressionism and to a much lesser extent, neue Sachlichkeit. Uh, so it was precisely, you know, thinking of these parallels and your interest in expressionism uh, that, you know, I came up and I think you liked it, the idea of, of architectural portraits to describe the work. So. Uh, uh, you can, uh, these buildings are the subjects of your portraits and you reveal their unique personalities thanks to also the help of light, as you mentioned. So, uh, and I, to, to a certain degree, I think you're also doing this with uh, your ongoing projects about living with Mies and Zaha. So I think that's basically uh, it. Um, so you're the, you're an expressionist uh, photographer uh, living in the 21st century. How's that? Uh, uh, in any <laughs> case, so okay. I mean, I know that our audience is so anxious yeah. to uh, go and hug you. Let's end maybe with one last question uh, about you and the future, because uh, an exhibition, in a way, is a closing up of one chapter, and there's opening up of many others. So. How do you plan on taking all of what you have learned in the Mies project um, with your new projects moving on forward? So uh, what do we have to uh, look forward to in the next couple of years from Marina Dane, in short? Yes, uh, wow. Um, I, there are two parts of your question, Michael Angelo. And I, I think I, I would like to answer the first one First, so, so I, as you know, I've worked so for such a long time on this project, and 
I know we talked about it often. What 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 impact has these got on you? Yeah, what happens because I change as a photographer working on my projects, of course, as well. And uh, what I learned by Nice is a line can make a difference. And so my composition is uh, is sharpened by him. Just to say one one thing, and I will take this aspect to all my following projects. As you mentioned, uh, exploring Sahar Hadid, I'm really interested in uh, following the next architect, legendary architect, and uh, she is a master of form and moving form and dynamic. And uh, yeah, I already started with this and uh, it was interrupted, you know why, and uh, I don't get into this <laughs> too much. We all hope we can come out of this uh, situation healthy and uh, alive again, waiting, looking for new projects. And Michelangelo, we have one big thing in Chicago and I think we should not give up. It is a pavilion. And we are here in a pavilion. It is about pavilions in the world. And we have David Wallace, who might watch us now as well, uh, building a new pavilion at uh, close to Farnsworth House. And I was asked to be the photographer of this. And you, I know, you write uh, the, uh, yeah, I don't know, article more than an essay about this pavilions in the world and the ar architecture history of it. I, I think we should stick on this, although we have to look for money, but they all have to look for money. That is not a difference. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you, Alina. And uh, I would be uh, toasting uh, to all of you uh, if I were there, but uh, let's hope that uh, COVID evaporates uh, and that uh, moving forward, we can continue these beautiful transatlantic uh, collaborations. Ivan, Anna, and Karina, I wish you all the best. And uh, uh, I will stop talking and hand over the mic and Zoom to all of you. Thank you very much, <laughs> Michelangelo. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you, Arina, as well. <laughs> But we might also have some questions from the audience here, and there's yeah. two of them from YouTube. So I will start with the ones uh, while we see if there's any over here in the audience. Uh, the, David Caral has two questions. One of them says that uh, there seems to be no people in your oh. photographs. Is this intentional to reach the maximum abstraction in your uh, mm -hmm. photography? Mm -hmm. Did you ever consider uh, mm -hmm. uh, having people in the photos? Mm -hmm. And, well, yeah, let's start yeah, with that one. interesting question. So uh, we have this beautiful poster, and this is one of the few photos with someone in it. And uh, I can't describe, answer this question very, very good by viewing this photo. You can see this, this lady mo moving out of the scenery. And the sharpness, as I said, I have that one point of sharpness. I like to, to decide. Uh, unsharpness, sharpness, and I decided for the furniture in front, and she's moving, she's vanished, kind of vanishing. So people have to be part of a, of, of a scenery, of an imagination scenery. I, I'm not so much looking and portraying them uh, as a street play or as a street photographer in real, yeah? I like to have them in a way uh, part of a composition, but very often, uh, I'm not really looking in portraying people. That was different when I started with photography. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it changed. I mean, if I can come to your uh, 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 shame here, because she and I have talked about this, and that's why um, these photos are called portraits that you would right. uh, normally yes. assign to photographs of people. That's and my true. Yeah. Is, there's plenty of people in these photos, but that those people are Arena. Mm -hmm. And Arena is like she is the person that's bringing her empathy and her gaze to bear on these buildings. So while you may not see conventional people standing, uh, whether it's for scale purposes or experiences space, we feel, I think, Alina 
as a human being through these pictures. Thank and that's you. where I think the empathy and the psychology of her own background mm -hmm. sort of inform the framing of this work. Thank you, Michelangelo. And also David Caral asks about uh, light and artificial light. Most of the photographs or all your photographs are taken during daytime. Right. Uh, and what do you think or what are your experiences uh, in buildings with artificial light when it's nighttime? Right, right. So yeah, um, I was lucky that uh, this recent model like M10 was developed uh, while I was photographing this uh, f um, project because it has this high rise ISO. I can really mm -hmm. go with this, uh, with difficult lightning situations, with this camera not using uh, any flash or any artificial light. Um, actually, it is, it is, the answer is mostly, again, a, a very personal one. I'm not so attracted by artificial light. Yeah. That's the reason why I don't photograph it so often. I did it at the Seagram building, and uh, that photo was shown in Haus Tugendhat. Yeah, I think that is only one photo. He, a very, very good observation, yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. I have an idea for a project uh, which is about artificial light, because I'm, I'm interested in, in the light, the artificial light they are using for, uh, for Baustellen. Uh, what is the, the English word, Baustellen? Construction places, yeah, which is really strong, hard light and hard shadows, and mm. I love that. Let's see what comes out of it. Are there any questions from the audience before we then invite you to also continue and see the exhibition with the 11 photos that we have in Kaisa Forum just across the street? Any questions from the audience here? There's one over there. Oh. Um, thank you for, for sharing your work. And I would like to ask, uh, do you look at other photographies of, of these iconic buildings or do you try to avoid them so Good they, yes. yeah, yes. so to have a unique experience of them? Actually, I try to avoid, mm. yeah. Uh, besides the ones uh, who show, uh, who are more historical ones, they are very interesting uh, how it was before, yeah. But I'm not so much in, interested in the interpretation of other artists. Now I am more because I have this finalized. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Yes, There's one over there. In the meantime, we want to thank all those people that are following us from Stuttgart, from Sweden, from Italy, and who are following and saying hello and thank you for thank you. all your... <laughs> hello, Arina. Hello. Um, I will ask you about the, uh, the idea of when you, when you think on your project, if you think also on doing a book uh, in parallel, and when you think on this book, if you think the graphic design, so the page and how to edit these photos would be different from the exhibition. Um, Juana, that I did get you right. You are asking about the design, the, the process of designing the book. So editing. Editing the book. Editing. So when you when you decide oh, yeah. how to exhibit, I, uh, yeah, which photos to very exhibit, very interesting question. Yeah. Or it would be the same yeah. as the uh, the photo chosen for the book. Right. Yes. Uh, so all the images you see here are also part of the book, um, which is what is all very interesting is um, what happens with photos if they are in the world. So then they are belong not any longer to me. Then they are part. They they are um, interacting with people, and I find it very interesting that some, even nations or cultures, uh, prefer this ones or this one, that ones. And the style is different, what people like. That is very interesting to see. And um, as Michelangelo says, um, the, 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 um, mm, yeah, the expressionistic, the personal attitude towards it, people react personal on my photographs as well. So I felt personal when I take them and people react on it. And that is uh, part in a personal way. And that is very interesting. And that was part of the editing, which choose, which leave out, 
and it had to be um, um, and, and it had to be uh, a mixture which fits to to all places. And there are some not shown I really like, but I'm not the only one to have to decide. <laughs> I was not asked. <laughs> Yes. Thank you very much. Remember yes. that we can visit the exhibition here in the Barcelona Pavilion and in Casa Forum until June uh, the 6th, that in Barcelona museums have always been open, luckily. We are very lucky with that. So we invite you all from all over the world to come to the city, to Barcelona, enjoy these exhibitions, and then obviously enjoy the rest of the city, which is also pretty nice. Two One, two, two, two things. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Just two things. Uh, one is that I decide that we go, when we walk the exhibition, we talked about some photos more, more in detail. And I would like to show you, for example, the photo of the book from Michelangelo, that you know what we were talking about before, and you can have your own impression. And that is the one thing. And the other thing is, uh, as Ivan said, the uh, Neue Nationalgalerie in Berlin was just finalized, and uh, David Schipperfeld did the preview, you probably or perhaps saw it on, on, on uh, YouTube and Facebook and whatever. Yeah, and we will have the Mies project will move uh, after Barcelona to Berlin. And if you don't have enough of these photos, feel welcome. <laughs> Thank you to the streaming team. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Arina and Michelangelo. Good evening. <laughs>